Let me ask you a question. What does Stranger Things and a thousands of year old symbol have in common? Uh, I say it's nostalgia. So nostalgia is a sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place with personal happy associations. Uh, and their similarities go past that one thing actually, both are heavily rooted in culture and both borrow extensively from previous bodies of work and ideas. Um, let me explain. Uh, let's start with this guy right here, the Celtic Knot. So the further that I got into this, it kind of felt like a conspiracy theory, which is really, really interesting. When I was originally sitting down to write this video, uh, and when I was writing the script for it, I was basically just doing a deep dive into the history of Celtic Knots. Um, and then I went into the deepest rabbit hole I've ever gone on before. It was awesome. This is a lot, so buckle up. So Celtic Knots are a variation of an endless knot, which has its history deeply rooted in ancient humankind. Endless knots are the symbols of the ultimate unity of everything, representing interconnectedness between all things and the cause and effect of our actions, a lot like karma. It is also a symbol of wisdom with no clear beginning or end, uh, just like the infinite knowledge of the Buddha. So you see the Buddhist context here, right? Uh, there's a reason for that. So endless knots were first found on clay tablets in the Indus region, uh, or modern day Pakistan and India from a civilization that is almost 5,000 years old. This symbol has since migrated into a key Hindi, Jain, and Buddhist context, chiefly becoming one of the eight auspicious symbols, uh, or Ashtamangala, which are essentially gifts that were awarded to the Buddha by gods once he achieved his enlightenment. But right now we're talking about Asian India. But let's get back to how these became important symbols thousands and thousands of miles away. And well, the tough thing about that is there's no real easy answer. A lot of Celtic history was oral and it wasn't written down. A lot of this is kind of speculative uh, and a lot of theory at best. So Celtic culture was actually pretty expansive through the Iron Age and it stretched all across Europe. It, it got its beginnings in what we would consider modern day France. Uh, parts of southern Germany, Belgium, Austria, that kind of thing, that, that area of Central Europe, and then kind of expanded outwards and expanded, hit my microphone, and it expanded down into places like Portugal and Spain, uh, east into bits of Ukraine and Turkey, and then as we know it, uh, up into Ireland and Scotland. So the spreading of these ideas and peoples most likely came from one of two possible logical explanations, and the first one being aliens, and the second one being Roman expansion, which is probably the real reason. This pushed groups that opposed Roman rule further away from the Mediterranean region as they tried to, you know, practice their own things. But it also incorporated a lot of that culture into Roman art as they did their thing and, you know, they conquered the entire world. Uh, with the Romans also came Christianity, which as almost all ancient religions do, it borrows a lot from other ancient religions, namely Buddhism. Uh, especially in the symbolism. Specifically a symbol that stood for balance between religious and secular work. Something like an endless knot. Oh, perfect. Let's just use this symbol that exists already. And this is kind of like a certain show that I mentioned earlier. Stranger Things takes a lot of influence from 80s movies and Stephen King books. So you might call this a ripoff, but it, that tends to have a negative connotation and we tend to say inspired by when we like things. And I like Stranger Things, so I'm gonna say it was inspired by every single 80s movie and Stephen King book ever made. There's nothing inherently wrong with this. With Stranger Things, it's easy to make the connections because that only happened 30 years ago. Uh, and like I mentioned previously, with Celtic Knots, it's actually much harder because the Celts kept an oral history rather than a written one, which basically meant that they were playing a super long game of ancient telephone. So there's a lot of controversy surrounding the history of the Celts. Uh, what we do know is that the Celts did put very similar meanings into these iconic knots in the same way that the Hindus and the Buddhists did after they became Celtic Christian. But how did all this come back into vogue? I mean, this, this was like 500 BC to 1 BC. In a weird way, it's kind of nostalgia. To be clear, the Celtic culture never really went away. Beethoven was commissioned to create Scottish folk songs. And so, you know, a lot of that kind of Celtic influence it exists there, and that was the 17th century. In 1857 to about 1885, there was a discovery in Switzerland in which over 2,500 Celtic artifacts were recovered from a single site called Laten, 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 Latene. It's French. 
I'm sorry. This discovery was huge and it launched Celtic art back into the public eye. The discovery of all these artifacts allowed for a better understanding of the Celts. And along with multiple nationalist movements, chiefly probably being the Irish nationalist movement, the desire for people to understand their ancestors became incredibly strong and has allowed these influences to persist. So there's many different forms of knots like the shield knot and the Dara knot. The Dara knot actually looks a lot like legendary symbol, the uh, production house, very interesting there. Celtic high cross. Uh, very, very iconic. And using a lot of border work, we have the uh, Sailor's Celtic Knot. But at each knot's core, the endless interwoven design uh, really tries to say that everything is connected. Uh, be it wisdom or love or friendship or time, these designs will stick around. And not just because the meaning behind them is important, but the cultural impact as well. So it's interesting kind of diving into this history because my family on my dad's side comes from Ireland and Scotland. So it was very interesting to go back through this. And it, like I mentioned previously, it was almost like a conspiracy theory. It's just like, oh, okay, cool. Celtic knot, endless knot. It's got this meaning, great like that. It's also a huge Hindu and Buddhist symbol, which is really interesting. How are these things connected? So we have a release coming up in March. It's March. We're going to be doing some stuff for St. Patrick's Day. We have a design called Take Root, which is done by Bruce Lee, who's a fantastic artist that I love to see every time we work with him because his designs are awesome. But you can see by the designs here that they've very obviously come from a Celtic design. I mean, the interconnectedness, the lines all over the place, but it's also very rounded and flowing almost. These designs seem to make up uh, a sword. So you can kind of see the hilt towards the right end of this and then the blade going towards the left end. Um, and these come in three different color waves. We also have a couple of other designs coming out. We have Top of the Morning, which features these leprechauns and pots of gold. And we also have Learn the Ropes, which has these fishes going across them. Uh, with these nice swirly designs. Again, very Celtic inspired, which is really cool to see. So even now in 2023, I mean, we see artwork like this all over the place and the designs here that we are releasing on wristbands. Uh, I mean, we've all seen them as tattoos all over the place. It's fascinating. I recommend if you wanna learn anything more about this, just type in the history of Celtic knots into Google and let all the links that Google has to offer are kind of take you on this road. So we have the links down below to our website. You can find out more information there. And if you're subscribed to our Sunday email, Jason, our CEO and founder, has given a little bit more information about the other couple designs that we're releasing this week as well. Some of the folklore behind it, the history behind it, which is also very interesting to read about. Follow the links down below. Make sure you're subscribed as well. Hit that little bell if you want to see more videos like this and check out the rest of the videos on our channel. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.